this video we will solve example 4.4. .4. Example 4.4 .4 states, a climber who weighs 750 newtons rests statically with one foot against a cliff wall while supported by a cable that pulls on him with a force of 790 newtons at an angle of 24 degrees with the vertical as shown below. In part A, it says find the magnitude of the normal force N acting on the climber's foot, and in part B, it says find the magnitude of the friction force F acting on the climber's foot. So why don't we begin this example in which all these different forces are applied to this climber by drawing a free body diagram for the climber. That is, I'll draw a representation of the climber with all the forces that are acting on him. So one of the forces that you're given is that there's a downward force that is the climber's weight. Another force that you're given is that there is this force pushing on the climber to the right from the cliff wall, and that's N, the normal force. That's one of the forces we have to find. There's another force pushing up on the climber's foot from the cliff wall that's a frictional force because it's parallel to the surface, and we'll call that force F. And then the last force is a force that acts at an angle, and you're given that angle is 24 degrees from the vertical, And that force is the force in the cable that's supporting the climber's weight, and that's a force we'll call C. So there's a diagram that shows all the forces, and in part A, you are asked to find the normal force N acting on the climber's foot. So in part A, we're trying to find one of these forces. So we're given what C is, we're given what W is, and we're supposed to find N in part A and F in part B. N is a horizontal force. And the critical piece of information that we're given that's going to allow us to solve parts A and B is that the acceleration of the climber is zero. Now, it never actually says that, but it does say that the climber is in a static position, that he's resting statically. So static is a word that when you see it, you know it's going to mean the acceleration is equal to zero. This is going to allow us to solve for N because we know that horizontal forces cause horizontal accelerations. So I could say by Newton's second law that the sum of all of the horizontal forces is equal to the mass of the climber times the climber's horizontal acceleration. But the climber's horizontal acceleration is zero. So this means that the sum of all the horizontal forces acting on the climber is equal to zero. And that's how we're going to solve this problem. So if we look at, again, at the free body diagram, we see that there are only two forces with horizontal components. One of them is N, and one of them is the horizontal component of force C. Force C also has a vertical component that we're going to need to solve the second part. So why don't we break up the force C into its horizontal and vertical components. Let's resolve this vector. And we're going to do that by making a triangle. So this is force C, and I'm going to draw a, a horizontal part that is directed to the left, and I'm going to draw a vertical part that is directed up. And then what we're going to find is the horizontal part, I'll call it CY, and, and then the vertical part, I'll call it CX. And the way we're going to find these is by using this angle, 24 degrees, and we're going to use those trig relationships. So I know that the sine of 24 degrees is going to be equal to the side that is opposite, which is Cx, over the side that is the hypotenuse, or C. So I can say that Cx is equal to C times the sine of 24 degrees. I could also say that the cosine of 24 degrees is equal to Cy, the adjacent side, over the hypotenuse. Or I could write that the vertical component of C is equal to C times the cosine of 24 degrees. So if I go to my calculator, I can find the sine of 24 degrees. So I say 24 and I multiply by the value of C, which is 790, and I find that the horizontal component is equal to 321.3 newtons. 
and I can do the similar calculation for the cosine and I find that the vertical part is 721.7 newtons. So if I go back to this equation where I know that the sum of the horizontal forces is zero, well those horizontal forces include this normal force and then there's a force in the opposite direction that is the horizontal part of C, so 321.3 and that has to equal zero. So by giving n a uh, positive and putting a negative in front of the 321, we've essentially chosen a sign convention here. So I'm saying that to the right is positive. And why don't I also say that up is positive at the same time. So we can solve for part A right now. We find that n is equal to 321.3 newtons. We're going to do a similar thing for part B. In part B, we're going to take advantage of the fact that we have a static situation again, only this time that is going to lead us to the result that the vertical force, the sum of all the vertical forces, equals zero. And the vertical forces that we have, again, assuming that up is positive, is we have a vertical force that is the vertical component of the cable force, which is 721.7, that's positive. There is a downward force that's equal to the weight, and that's given to you as 750, that's W. And then there is an upward force, we'll assume it's upward, that is the friction. So I'll call that plus F, and all those have to add together to give me zero. So if I add these together, get F minus 28.3 equals 0, and that is going to lead us to F is equal to 28.3 newtons, and that is our solution for part B. And that is how we solve example 4.4.